All right, everybody, welcome back. Today, I'm gonna do another walkthrough of how to purchase a Neo. I've had a few requests to do this video, so I'm doing it now by popular demand. So hopefully you guys all watch it. I think we all probably have already seen the launch press conference for the ES7. Um, that was about a week ago. If you haven't watched that, go back and watch it. Today, I'm gonna take you through the buying process of the ES7, step-by-step, -step, show you all the options, how much it costs to get an ES7 here in China. And I'm going to give you a couple of my thoughts about the ES7 that I think maybe uh, haven't really been talked about yet. So stick around. Let's go. First things first, I made a video about the Neo app just recently. You can go back and watch it. I mentioned in that video that on the top of the main screen are a few tabs that have uh, various categories. Well, the app's been updated now since the ES7 has launched. And now on the top tab area, there's a section all about ES7. So we're going to tab into that and you're going to see all about the ES7. There's tons of information on here, lots of pictures, lots of videos, lots of things talking about the ES7. If you have the Neo app, feel free to go and check that. It's there for you to peruse. But we're not gonna go through all that today. We're just gonna look at buying the car. Try to make this quick for you. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom, click on make a reservation, and I'm presented with two choices. The first is the ES7 launch edition or first edition, and the second, option here, the one that says 468,000 RMB, that one is just your standard ES7 that you can make some different selections that you want to make. The ES7 launch edition um, is cheaper, but it comes with like basically fully kitted out. So first we're going to go into the bottom section, ES7 normal edition. You can see that it says zero to 100 kilometers or 60 miles per hour in 3.9 seconds. You can see that it says standard uh, air suspension. It has the 7.1.4 surround sound, 23 speaker system. You can see it has the updated system and it has the heads up display. And you can see that it has the queen seat. Now in the ES7 presentation, it mentioned the queen seat in Chinese. When you watch the translation in English, it didn't say queen seat. So Neo's uh, branding, um, I think they don't want queen seat as they go into Western markets because that's sexist, right? The man drives, the woman sits there and gets massaged and puts her feet up and is pampered and is the queen. So as we go through this, I'm gonna lay the cards on the table right here and say that a lot of what I'm seeing from this ES7 launch video and the product itself, I think is them preparing for their expansion into Europe and the Western markets, like full, full force. And I'll point out a couple things as we go. Let's go into ES7, 468,000, normal edition. You know, uh, the ES8 and EC6 and ES6 they always had like Sport Edition and Signature Edition, all these different models you can get. But with the ET7 and the ET5 and now the ES7, so all the uh, version platform 2.0 cars, fewer options when you're actually purchasing the car. The model of the car that you can get, like there's no Sport, Signature, Performance, different options. It's just the car basically. But then you can still choose all your options piece by piece um, as you go. So it's slightly different. So for this car, ES7, non-launch edition, you can see that it's uh, 468,000 RMB for the 75 kilowatt hour battery and if you're buying the battery and then if you buy it with a 100 kilowatt hour battery that's 526,000 RMB uh, and if you do it as battery as a service 398,000 RMB that's about 60k US dollar and if you do a 75 kilowatt hour battery that is also exactly the same 398,000 RMB. The only difference is the price of battery as a service. Battery as a service for 75 kilowatt hour battery is 980 RMB a month. And for a hundred kilowatt hour battery, that is 1680 per month. Now it has gone up 200 RMB due to the way the world's going economy wise. We're gonna go to the launch edition if I can find it. And we're gonna check out this car, what you get, what the options are, and see if we can find one that works for me. Although I'm not, I'm not really gonna order it. So for the launch edition, you only have the option for a 100 kilowatt hour battery. You don't have the option for 75 kilowatt hours. You can either buy your battery or you can rent your battery. Buying your battery, 548,000 RMB, about 82,000 US dollars. Renting your battery, 420,000 RMB, about 62,000 US dollars. 1680 RMB per month battery as a service fee. So we're gonna choose that one, La uh, launch edition car, renting the battery, and uh, we're gonna kit it out. So first we're gonna look at the different colors. You have your options, standard Neo colors for the 2.0 platform. You have white, 
you have gray, you have black, you have sky blue here, you have this burnt orange color, you have the southern star south pole blue here, and then you've got the aurora borealis green, and then you have another kind of sky blue color, this is the same color that they brought on stage at the ES7 launch and the same color that was at the ET5 launch. So if you choose any of the more uh, flashy colors like this orange, the blue, green, or the other blue, those are all 10,000 RMB extra. So I'm gonna go with blue. Now we're at 430,000 RMB. Again, just like before on the other cars, we can choose our tires. It's all very easy, very straightforward. If we go with the 20 inch wheels, it doesn't cost anything extra. Those are actually smaller than the standard wheels that they give you for the launch edition, um, but you get more range with the smaller wheels, 620 kilometers ex uh, estimated range. Then you also have this other 20 inch rim right here, kind of spoke looking wheels, 620 kilometers range again. And now we have our standard, what's supposed to be included with the launch edition, 21 inch wheels and our range drops down to 575 kilometers. And then we also have another 21 inch set of wheels here that we can choose. And these ones are pretty cool, but they're also 575 kilometers of range and you add 7,500 RMB Chinese Yuan to your total. So I'm gonna choose those ones. We're gonna max out this car here, 437,500 RMB. After we choose the wheels, we can now see this 360 degree view inside the car, we can make it bigger. Look, you can see the HUD. You can't zoom in, but you can see the HUD over there. You can see all the materials. You can see Nomi there. I can look up, look down. I can even go to the back row, select the back row. Same thing, you can see the nice looking skylight, moon roof opens up nicely. During the video, they said that this roof is the biggest in its class, so that's pretty exciting. You also have the back row uh, screen, just like in the ET7. And uh, now let's see what kind of color options we have. This first one that we're on right now, oops, go back in there. This first one that we're on right now is black and brown. You can see that the brown is like the color of the seats-ish, and the black is the color of all the other materials like along the ceiling, along the A pillar, B pillar. We're gonna go now do black with white. Now we have white trim up top. Let's move to the front row. I'm not a huge fan of this look. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Now we're gonna go to the third one, black on black. That looks pretty good. That's the one I would go with, but I'm not buying this car. Let's go see what else we got. Now we have white on gray. These are all our options here. Let's go back to the back row, see that again. That looks pretty nice, actually. I do like that. Boom. And then the final option is white with the black highlights on top. Now we have white seats, black top. Looks a little bit like a Tesla. A nicer version of a Tesla with a Nomi. Um, yeah, it's cool. I like it but I'm gonna go with uh, black on black and we're gonna move forward here. None of these, by the way, cost extra money. You can see here, the price does not go up at all. In any, if I click throughout any of them, the price doesn't change. But we're gonna go black on black and we're gonna keep going. Now we have our keys. We can choose white or black. Again, price doesn't change. I'm gonna go black again. And we see that Nomi is included, Nomi Mate 2.0. However, our moon color of Neo logo is not included. That's 4,500 extra. If you remember, people who pre-ordered the ET5 early, they got this included. They got the moon logo, and they also got the orange brake calipers all included for free as a gift for buying the ET5 early. Um, but here, it's not included, and it costs us 4,500 and 3,500 extra, respectively. Now, this is where I want to talk about the electric towing hitch, that's 7,500. Uh, we can't add the price now. We, can't, we can only order it uh, after August or during August. It tells you that right there. Um, 
I'm not sure why, but uh, you can't pre-order it with the towing hitch at this time. Now, what I find interesting about launching it with a tow hitch, uh, I think this really starts to signify their real, real push for going into Europe and North America because they did in the video talk about how Chinese people are more and more getting into camping, more and more getting into you know, this kind of outdoors lifestyle. And that's true, that's very true. When I've driven around China, I've seen quite a few people camping. I've seen RVs going around. But the one problem I have with this in China is camping for the most part in China is still kind of a legal gray area. You are starting to see some places that uh, are kind of like Western style or American style, um, like RV camps or campgrounds, but they're still hotels Like you can pull up and park. Some even have like places to charge your car or uh, plug in your appliances outside if you have an RV. However, they still usually have uh, hotel rooms. Uh, a lot of times they might even be like uh, converted shipping containers or things like that. But for the most part, there's not like, you can't like go to a campground and pay to camp and that sort of thing. Because in China, you need to register. Technically, you need to register where you, where you are every night. You can't just live off the land. So that's one issue. The other issue is um, they did say in the video they're going to be the first or one of the first cars that are rated for towing or make it legal to tow a camper or tow something behind your car. Again, in China, most people don't have a license, a driver's license that will allow them to tow anything. From what I understand about my driver's license is I'm not legally allowed to tow anything. So maybe that's changing. Maybe that's something they're going to push for in China. From my perspective, that's not, it's, not, it's not really something that like even 1% of NEO owners or ES7 owners are going to be doing is towing things with their ES7. Another issue here is uh, even if you are legally able to tow, your, tow something behind your car, even if you are legally able to camp outside, you have, most people have nowhere to park their trailer or their jet ski like in the video. In China, if you're from a big city where like if you know, most people are, they're in Shenzhen or Shanghai, most NEO owners are in Shanghai, Shenzhen, Beijing, Guangzhou. These cities, parking is very expensive. Parking is very complicated. Like a lot of apartment buildings don't have enough parking spaces. So if you have a trailer and a car, you're going to be paying for two parking spaces. It's going to be expensive. And maybe, yeah, NEO owners by and large have higher incomes. They have more money. But most people aren't going to park a trailer just for the off chance that they can drive it, go camping a couple times a year. You know, a lot of apartments even like they'll have an... A uh, rule where like if you own an apartment you get one parking space right or you have the option to buy that parking space um, but usually you're not gonna have the option to buy two parking spaces because there's not enough parking spaces to go around so again it's gonna be highly unlikely that people in China are gonna be opting for a tow hitch going camping having a license that allows them to tow something and having a trailer to tow not only that but they also show jet skis um, lakes in China are, you're not allowed to put a boat into a, any lake in China, as far as I know. Um, you're not allowed to, you know, haul a jet ski somewhere and put it in a lake or a river or a reservoir. Um, this is all pretty much illegal, not allowed in China. There are, of course, oceans, you know, you can put your jet ski in the ocean. This is something that is possible. Um, although I've never seen a private person doing it, I've seen businesses doing it. But of course, things can change. China changes fast. Perhaps, uh, as China becomes more and more wealthy and people want to go out and play with their toys, there will be regulations and things that can, can change and, and give people the opportunity to take part in these kind of activities that we take part in, in like America, for example. But from what I saw from this presentation, what I want to say is that I think that even though they didn't explicitly mention it, a lot of what I, I saw and felt from the presentation is that, that this car, the ES7, is something that they really designed and are promoting and are going to be pushing in Western markets. Of course, I think it will sell well in China as well, but I think it'll be a great selling car simply because it looks like a great car. It looks really beautiful. It looks, in my opinion, much better than the ES6 and the ES8, which I've never been a huge fan of how they look. Um, I like the front a lot better without the grill. I like the back a lot better. I like the profile a lot better. There's no chrome anymore. Um, a lot of things I like about the car, plus the interior looks like an ET7. Plus it has all the other benefits of the extra air cushions in the seats and all the great stuff that we saw. But what I really ultimately think is that this car is, again, without explicitly saying it, I think it's more specifically for Western consumers with the electric tow hitch, you know, pushing an outdoor lifestyle that can actually be done in the West, in Europe. You know, it can be done in China, yes, technically, but not to the same extent that it's done in North America 
or Europe from my, my experience. Anyway, let's go back to buying the car. Oh. So we fully pimped it out, okay? We fully pimped it out. We got everything. Uh, we're not buying it outright. We're not buying it with the battery. We chose battery as a service. And our total, da 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 da, with no tow hitch, because we can't book that yet, our total is 445,500 RMB. In my opinion, that's a pretty dang good price for a pretty dang nice looking car. Of course, you can also add the option in the future of Neo autonomous driving. It's, uh, you know, the car's got the LiDAR, it's fully equipped for autonomous driving. Uh, it's just not quite ready yet. Um, and then you also can get the tow hitch later, which will add 7,500 RMB. Um, but overall, my opinion is that the car looks great and it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be launching in Europe this year in Germany uh, with the ET7. But that's just my thought. I don't know, what do you guys think? You guys think uh, the car looks good? Do you guys agree with my theory that the, the launch, even though it was in Chinese and didn't explicitly mention the West, is more of a kind of a product launch or a vision for a product that can launch in the West? That's just my thoughts. Um, so let me know what you guys think about it and let's, uh, let's go, Neil. My, my price target is eight to $130. Uh, yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Anyway, uh, see you guys uh, and bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.